This is Mr. Potter. We're going to finish off our discussion of recursion by talking about Sierpinski's triangle. So I want to talk real quickly about Sierpinski's triangle. So one of the things that we've mentioned when we talk about recursion is that they, they tend to produce fractals, uh, things with fractional dimension. And what brings Sierpinski into the discussion is because if we start off with a triangle, let's say this triangle right here, this equilateral triangle, and then I take this triangle, which is currently filled, and I decide that I want to get rid of the inner third, or the inner quarter of this triangle, I should say. Let's say this little triangular shape here. If I want to get rid of that triangular shape, then what happens is I end up with a shape that has three quarters of the area of the original figure. And if I continue that by, say, getting rid of this triangle here and this triangle here and this triangle here, then I'll end up with three quarters of that three quarters because out of these, each of these triangles, I'm taking away the inner third of that triangle. So I still have all of this shape. But eventually I'm going to be running into a problem where I'm just going to keep doing that. If I keep taking three quarters of this out and three quarters and three quarters and three quarters, that eventually will go to zero. If I were to take three fourths and raise it to the fifth power, that's gonna give me in the top, that's gonna to be three times three, nine times three, 27 times 381 times three, 243 over four times four, that's 16, times another four, that's 64, times another four, that's 256, times another four, that's 1,024. And as I keep multiplying, I'm gonna get a smaller answer than the time before. This eventually tends towards zero as this number increases without bound. And what that means is that if I were to continue this to its logical progression, I would end up with a shape that was nothing but outlines. It would have nothing but outlines in it. And so because it's nothing but outlines, because all of these things are just lines instead of areas, this is again where we're starting to run in that situation where we have uh, something transcending the barrier between a line drawing and a space filling area. And so this is another one of those examples where we have something with fractional dimension, a dimension that's somewhere between one and two. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about how to program this. So the idea behind this is that I want to draw a triangle. And of course, the way that I draw a triangle is that I go forward some distance. Excuse me, let me start over, okay. I, st I go forward some distance, so. Remember my turtle starts off as I go forward some distance, then I'll need to make sure that I go backwards that same distance, make a 60 degree turn, and then go forward, make a 60 degree right turn and go forward, and then make sure that I go back and back. That's my recursion, because that's gonna draw a triangle. So I'm gonna go over here and then make sure I draw a triangle. And then I need to make sure that I draw this line, draw this line, go back, and draw a triangle. So the thing is, each of these dashed triangles that I've illustrated here, each of these are my iterations. And my base case is I'm going to make this smaller and smaller and smaller each time. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is call upon myself recursively. So Sierpinski, uh, at my length divided by two. And then I'm gonna wanna go forward. And then I'm going to call upon myself again. And what that will do is that will draw this triangle here. And then I'm gonna have to go backwards. I'm gonna have to turn left. Then I'm gonna have to go forward turn right, go forward, and then I'm gonna to have to go backwards. That's gonna basically retrace back to here so that I can draw 
this triangle calling upon myself recursively again before I go uh, I turn back facing this way and then go backwards so I'm gonna have to turn left and then go backwards so this is how my recursion is going to go if um, my length is greater than zero so this is the idea behind my recursion but we're going to go ahead and implement this in our sculpt.org so we're going to jump to sculpt.org and as we've done so many times before we're going to get rid of the code we have here make sure we put our name and we're going to import turtle and then we're going to say t gets turtle dot turtle and then we're going to define our Serpinski now for our Serpinski I need to keep track of the lengths and I also need to keep track of the depth in other words how many times we've gone through this because I want to make sure that I only draw enough triangles for what I need so later on when I talk about how I want to Serpinski with a uh, with a length of 128 and a depth of 5 that's going to draw five levels of triangles each one of these with a length of 128 and this idea that if I keep cutting the length in half 128 goes to 64 to 32 to 16 to 8 8 pixels is about what I want to be able to see smaller than that and it's going to start looking very blurry so I'm going to go back to my definition of Serpinski and I'm going to put my colon to make sure I've got scope. Remember that everything here is going to be tabbed over four spaces. And so if the depth is equal to zero, if this is true, then all I want to do is draw a triangle. So for index in range of three, I'm going to t dot forward, whatever my length happens to be, and then t dot left. 120 degrees and that's going to take me right back to where I started now notice something I've got three levels here of indentation I've got one level here where my define is everything that's four spaces is going to be part of the definition of the Serpinski function I've got the if which is eight levels and everything that's eight levels tabbed is going to be part of this if and later on we're going to have an else statement that's going to be taking care of stuff if the, the depth count is not zero in other words if I still need to draw smaller triangles and then I've got this four level which is actually 12 spaces indented every time I have one of these colors I'm adding a one of these colons I'm adding another level of depth and this is just if my depth is zero all I want to do is hey go draw a triangle and that's what I'm doing so I need to hit my else and my else goes with my if which means my else has to be indented at the four space level else this is what I want to do I'm gonna call on myself recursively Serpinski but because I'm calling on myself recursively keep in mind up here this was my base case so I need to get smaller and smaller I need to get down to that base case so I need to make sure that my length is getting smaller so I'm gonna divide my length by two I also need to make sure that my depth is getting smaller so I'm gonna say depth minus one in other words if I'm on level five I'm gonna call on myself recursively with level four if I'm on level two I'm gonna call on myself recursively with a depth of one and if I'm at depth of one I'm gonna call on myself recursively with depth of zero in other words just draw triangles but at this point I've got my Serpinski and now I need to draw the rest of it so let's go back to what we had for our notes for our recursive statement we did our Serpinski and then we wanted to go forward that's forward along this bottom yellow line that's forward here to make sure that we draw this triangle so after we do this Serpinski we're going to say t dot forward at whatever our length divided by 2 is and then we're going to call on Serpinski again at our length divided by 2 and our depth minus 1 and then I need to make sure I go back to my starting point so t dot backward at length divided by 2 and of course what we're doing here is we're making sure that we go back along this path so that now I can make sure that I go up this way 
I can go up this way to make sure I draw this triangle that we had. So I went back and now I want to T dot left at 60 degrees and then I want to draw that triangle. So I'm going to say T dot forward again length divided by 2 and then I want to go T dot right 60 degrees. And what that does is that makes sure that once I'm at this point right here, oops, excuse me, once I'm at this point right here, that now I'm facing this way so I can do the Sierpinski and draw the triangle the way that I need to. So I'm facing the right way, so now I can draw a Sierpinski triangle with the length divided by two and depth minus one. And then I need to go back. So I need to make sure that I change my direction correctly. So T dot left 60. That makes sure that I'm facing the right way. And then I can go T dot backwards, whatever length divided by two is, and then set my direction correctly again. In other words, this T dot left here undoes the T dot right that I did. And I'm gonna need a T dot right to cancel out this T dot left that I had up above. So T dot right 60. Now keep in mind that every time that I do this, my Sierpinski's triangle, I actually end up with one, two, three triangles. And because I end up with three triangles at each step, I actually have one iteration, that's a comment, I have two iterations and I have a third iteration. And so because I've got this three levels of iteration, it's going to be very similar to what we did with the binary tree and with the Fibonacci tree, that instead of one trunk becoming two trunks becoming four trunks, I'm gonna have one triangle becoming three triangles. And then this triangle here will become nine triangles because each of these will have three triangles drawn in them. Just those lines are gonna be drawn, but that would be enough to actually draw out nine triangles. And if I had recursion once more, then I'm gonna have 27, because I'll have three triangles in each of these. And that's why I wanna make sure that I draw it big enough so that I can actually see what's going on. So I've got a lot of extra space here. I'm just gonna get rid of it so that I just call on Sierpinski with a length of 128 and a depth of five. So let's run this and see how this works. So there he is, see, notice he's tracing out triangles. And then after he traces out the first triangle, he always goes back and goes over to trace the triangle and he's going back again. So this is kind of slow. So one of the things that we talked about was that we could adjust the speed. So I'm gonna say T dot speed 10, just to make sure that he's going a little bit faster. And so now you can see he's really dancing around those triangles. Keep in mind, each of these triangles that we're drawing has a pixel length of eight. So in other words, each of these are eight pixels wide. And so now I end up, goes back, now here's the next iteration that it's doing here. So it did one, then this was the second iteration, this is the third iteration. This triangle here will be the fourth iteration, and then it'll do a bigger one that'll end up being the fifth iteration. So we're gonna be able to see all five of these iterations. It's just going to take us a while. There we go. So now it's started the fifth iteration. It's gonna make another triangle just like this over here. And you can kind of see how this is, you know, developing a lot of holes in it. This is a very meshy shape, how it's starting to lose the concept of area and start to just be a line design. That's what makes this a fractal. That's what makes it have this fractional dimension. The idea that it's got a recursive call to it where it kind of calls itself. Ultimately, if I was to do this at a depth of infinity, I should be able to zoom in on any picture, any part of this picture, and it would be indistinguishable from looking at the original. And that's another characteristic of fractals and of recursion. So, um, our little turtle's working his heart out trying to get this finished, but that's all that we have for today. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this little excursion into recursion and this discussion about fractals and fractional dimensions. Um, once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.